Today, what we're going to be looking at is using atomic spectroscopy. So this is going to touch upon some of the stuff from the last lesson, uh, but we'll start with just a review of the different types of atomic spectroscopy and how we obtain a spectrum. So in all cases, we have a prism through which light gets passed and then it gets detected. And this is going to be our final spectrum. So the first thing is we have a light source. Now, if this is pure white light, then what's going to happen is this is going to go through here, it's going to pass through the spectrum, and it's going to do that. It's going to spread out, and we will get a continuous Continuous spectrum that goes from uh, red to violet, green in the middle. So we'll obtain something like that if we have white light. Now that's just going to happen, that's the basis for every experiment. And what we're going to do is look at absorption spectroscopy. So when we do absorption spectroscopy, what we do is we pass our white light, so we're still using a white light source, but we're going to pass it through usually something like a gas lamp. And a gas lamp is um, a, just a container that contains gaseous atoms of an element, or it could be a compound or a mixture. But if we're just looking at a pure element, it's gaseous atom of that element. The white light goes through. Now what's going to happen is some wavelengths will be absorbed. And this is absorption. we're looking at. Absorption spectroscopy. Some wavelengths will be absorbed. So whenever you do the passing it through the prism and it separates out, you'll still get your continuous spectrum. However, you will get some black lines gaps. And those gaps are related to the wavelengths that are absorbed. And you can characterize the particular atom based on those wavelengths. Now, if we're doing emission spectroscopy instead, so we're still going to have a prism. This time we're going to do emission. We're still going to have a spectrum produced. But this time we don't start with white light. What we start with is our sample. And we need to excite the sample. So we excite it so that the electrons get promoted to higher energy levels. And we can do that by heating it up. This is the most common way. By heating it up. So for example, a flame test would excite them and we'd start seeing colour being emitted or it can be heating it using electricity so if you generate a high resistance in a coil it heats it up and you can take it even so far where it's not just atoms it's a plasma and that's a, a more recent advance but what you do is you excite them you can heat or you could use light but heat is more common this is the more common one and it excites them, the electrons inside the sample, and as they fall back down, so they've gone up, as they fall back down to lower energy levels, only specific wavelengths are going to go through. And instead of getting a full spectrum, what you'll do is you'll get 
different ones because this is going to be only specific wavelengths. I can't spell specific there. Specific wavelengths will come through. And for each one of those, you'll get a characteristic coloured band. And that will be characteristic of the sample. Now this is the basis. So with absorption, white light passes through your sample. So with absorption, white light sample prism spectrum. With emission, it's sample, which is being excited straight to the prism and you see individual coloured bands. In absorption, you see individual gaps. The gaps and the coloured bands, if it is the same element, will be in the same position. But how do we use this? So using it. Uh, using spectroscopy. Well, different elements will absorb or emit different different wavelengths. So if you know what wavelength your element is going to emit or absorb, you can make sure look only at that wavelength. And that wavelength will be specific or characteristic of a particular element. And whenever you're looking at just one wavelength, so before we were looking at the range of wavelengths, this time we're looking at one specific wavelength, the absorption or emission, doesn't matter which one, but the intensity of the signal is proportional to, so that just means proportional, the concentration. So that means the stronger the intensity of the wave of light or the beam of light that you get at that wavelength, the higher the concentration. So for example, say we took, I'm just going to make an imaginary element X, and it absorbs and emits at wavelength 480 nanometers. So what we do is we now have a source of light and it is just giving off 480 nanometers. And we then pass that through our sample. So this is absorption. Pass that through our sample. And we don't need to collect a spectrum. We just detect the intensity. So how much of this light has been able to get through here. The more light that's been absorbed, the lower the intensity will be. Uh, now some machines will convert that and they will say the absorption intensity. The absorption intensity, you'd want that to be large and that means that a lot is absorbed. But if you're looking at how much has gone through the sample, the intensity will be low. So it, it really depends on the context of the question. But you looking at one wavelength, passing it through your sample, and detecting how intense it is. And you can relate intensity to concentration. And it means that you can use absorption spectroscopy as a way of working out concentration. And this is something that's frequently done through techniques called colorimetry or um, absorption spectroscopy. It gets referred to in two different ways. 
So if we look at how we would do an experiment, how would we work out? Concentration. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make a set of standard solutions. Usually around five. And you'll make them over a range of concentrations. And you want whatever you expect your sample to have, you want your sample to lie somewhere within your range of standard solutions. So maybe you do 0 0.25 mole per litre. And then you do 0 0.5, 1.0, 2.0. Um, 4.0 is quite high, but you do a range of values and you're expecting your sample, you think it's going to be between 0 0.5 and 1. If that's correct, it's going to fit on this line. So you make your standard solutions. Remember, you're going to make them in a volumetric flask. It's really important that you use deionized water because any ions in water can also absorb or emit. So you want it to be deionized water. So the only compound, the only chemical is your sample or your specific. And so you make the standard solutions using the element you want to test. So if you have a mixture and it contains five different elements. Say it contains hydrogen, oxygen, iron, chlorine, and copper. And you want to find out the concentration of copper. Well, you need to make a set of standard solutions that just contain copper. And then you do the absorption spectroscopy. And what you end up with is you've got your different concentrations along the bottom, and then you have your intensity, I. And what you'll find is that the lower the concentration, the higher. And you should get a straight line. There should be a straight line relationship between concentration of sample and intensity. And you draw a line of best fit. That's quite a wobbly one there. Use a ruler if you're doing it. And then what you do is you test your sample. You test your sample and what you're looking for is the intensity. And say you find, well, the intensity of my sample is here. That's the value. All you do is read off, read down, and that is the concentration of your sample. And you can do that for every element inside a compound. That's one way to check if your compound's pure. It's one way to check whether or not you've made a solution correctly is by looking at its absorption spectroscopy. Now the name given to this graph is a calibration. Graph, sometimes called a calibration curve, even though it's a straight line, but we'll ignore the curve and we'll call it just a calibration graph. Now the calibration graph is what you use making your standard solutions, then you test your sample and measure intensity of your sample, read across to your line of best fit, down and you've got your concentration. This technique is something that you need to know. You need to know how to make a calibration graph or calibration curve.
you might be asked to plot one. You will most likely be asked to read off a concentration from a calibration graph using an intensity. And maybe during your research project, you might want to use this technique in order to work out a concentration of sample that you've done, either to check its purity or as a way of just checking that you've made something correctly. So that was using atomic spectroscopy. So the key things to remember are atomic spectroscopy, absorption, uses light passing through a sample, which is then separated. Emission spectroscopy excites the sample and the light comes from the sample. It is your light source, which then gets passed through and you see it. When you're wanting to use spectroscopy to work out a concentration, you no longer use a white light source. You use a particular wavelength and you pass that through and see how much is absorbed. Now, one thing I didn't say earlier with absorption spectroscopy is how do you know what wavelength to use? Now, you might know However, what you can do is plot a graph where you have all the different wavelengths here. You do an absorption spectroscopy. So this is going to be your um, absorption. And you might get a graph that looks like that. It can be all, a whole load of shapes. But whatever the highest signal is on that for your sample or for your element, that is the wavelength that you choose to use whenever you're doing the absorption. So you do the whole spectrum and find what is the maximum value and you choose that value as the one to detect how much is absorbed and then you use your calibration graph using a set of known or standard solutions to compare your sample to so that you can relate it to an exact concentration. That was an overview of calibration and atomic spectroscopy. Thank you for your attention.